Hi guys, David Michael here. This is one that I didn't think I would ever do because I don't forage cattails every year. It's just something that I play with. You're never gonna collect enough pollen to make enough bread for a year, or at least I don't have time to collect enough pollen to do that. But it is fun every now and then to collect enough pollen to make, say, pancakes for the kids, take the kids out, collect cattail pollen, and nibble on the shoots. Now I do nibble on the shoots quite often, usually every year. Uh, they are delicious at a certain time of year and that's what I hope to cover. We're going to collect some of this cattail pollen and I'm going to make cattail pancakes. Now you can use the pollen to substitute for any recipe that uses flour. It's just hard to get enough of the pollen to make a hundred loaves of bread, say. So it's pretty easy to get enough to make pancakes for you and the kids, and it's a fun thing to do. Now you can eat the roots of cattail. I've only done twice in my life, and you can eat these shoots. I'm gonna show you what's going on with this. This is the female part of the flower head. It's gonna be the pollen, and you pull this sheath back. You peel this back, you peel it, now this is the female part of the plant which is going to be the pollen, I'm going to show you that, and this is what's going to end up being the male part or the seed part which is going to turn this brown color. Now it's important to collect it at this stage right here that I'm pointing at. You can see when I touch it that the pollen erupts. Whereas when I touch this, the pollen doesn't erupt. Now this can be fried and eaten. And this stalk can be peeled back and eaten raw. And actually, it isn't stringy. See how it just clips right off? It's delicious raw. But you can add it to stir fries. You can do all kinds of things with it. And you can fry this and eat it like it is. Now, the one time I did it, I did not like it. It wasn't very good. However, these stalks I eat quite often. And you'll eat them until it starts to get stringy. There's a couple of different ways that you can harvest this. One way that I do it, and this is the stage I like, when they're both almost the same color, the male part and the female part, you can just stick that in a bag and do this with your hands. And that pollen comes right off. And that's a lot of flour. Now the reason I don't use it at this stage is because it's dried up and what it just doesn't seem to have any real flavor and I don't know that that pollen there has a lot of nutrients. Type bread you can make breads. I tried one time and failed but a lot of times when I'm not gonna pick the stalks to eat them I just take these right here when they're still the same color and I stick it in the brown bag and then I just peel the pollen off like that in the sack. I'm not gonna go into what you can and can't do with the roots. The stalks are edible raw like I said. The roots are good but you gotta get it in areas where you don't have a lot of farm runoff. And I collect the pollen at this color because like I showed you, that pollen was dry and it doesn't seem to have a lot of nutrients. I know there's iron in it and I've read that it's also anti-tumor or anti-cancer, but I haven't seen any data that backs that up. This is high in iron and it is yummy. So the next time you see me, we'll be in the kitchen making pancakes. There is so much about the cattail plant 
that's good and useful not only for culinary reasons but in bushcraft fire starting I couldn't do a video on it without it being too long to watch the very next step after shaking the pollen off which most people shake it off in the sack you see me pull it off in the sack the very next step is to get a really fine fine mesh basket and you get the chafe out this way and you also get the pollen out this way now technically you can eat this and I imagine it would be really good fiber but what we are after for the most part isn't the husk that holds the pollen but it is the pollen itself and that's what we're gonna make flour out of now I've read that you can make flour really good flour out of the roots but I've never tried it now I don't know how to store this so anyone watching this who's ever stored or found a way to store pollen from cattails please leave a comment and let me know how because I would definitely be interested in doing that so all I'm doing is getting the pollen out of here any husks or bugs or anything that might be left in this is going to go into a Ziploc bag and you'll know when the pollen's pretty much out of it because it starts to turn a darker color and when you shake this you'll notice that you're starting to get husks pushed through and it'll feel it'll feel dry to the touch you'll get the hang of it and then what I do when I know I got it all the good pollen out of the the fluff of the male part of the flower as I put it in a Ziploc bag and later I'm gonna dry it add gunpowder a small amount of gunpowder <laughs> and make a uh, fast fire starter now you can see the color difference in here the pollen versus the flower husk you can see the color difference and so that's what we're doing is we're getting the pollen out and from there we'll have our pollen flower now this stuff will just from me pouring it out of the bag into this bowl you can see the rim around it is just stained with pollen so my point is if you're allergic to pollen or you're not sure I don't know that I would bring this into the house and just start going to town with it until you know whether or not your respiratory system can handle it without it flaming I get this done and I'm gonna show you my recipe for flapjacks I've only done it two different ways I made a flatbread out of this pollen once and it was much better than the flatbread that I made out of the acorn flour I've never tried to put yeast in this so I do not know how to respond to yeast nor have I researched it or looked in to see if anyone's trying to get bread to rise using cattail pollen flour so if anyone has ever done that definitely put some comments down because I would be curious I've only played with this to have fun and make pancakes and try flatbread and it's a good thing to do with the kids so I will see you guys when I'm ready to mix when cooking these pancakes you got to cook them on a lower heat pancakes are a trick anyway and one thing that I've noticed that messing with this pollen over the years is you got to have a little more oil than normal so with these I, I'm not a big oil guy unless I'm doing infused herbals uh, I use butter and then I wipe the butter off the skillet each time I get ready to what I'm gonna do is cook this whole batch and I think I'm gonna freeze these individually for when Dawn and I go camping. If you've ever had a bee pollen tablet, 
I remember the first time I had a bee pollen tablet. My grandmother had them. And that odor, that taste, is kind of what cattail pollen smells like. And curiously enough, it's this beautiful golden color just like the bee pollen. So now it's making me wonder, you know, is it really bee pollen? Did they really take the pollen off the... Oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> anyway, Dawn is going to leave a recipe for these because I'm a dump cook and it messes with her OCD. <laughs> so I didn't mix any of this on camera simply because I dumped it all together. And basically what I did was took a quarter of a stick of butter and I melted it. I put approximately one and a half cups of pollen against one and a half cups of regular flour, a tablespoon of baking powder, not quite a teaspoon of salt. I did not add sugar because I'm going to put uh, my homemade elderberry pancake syrup on these. But Dawn will leave a recipe at the end. These are what the pancakes are going to look like. The little silver dollars and then that's about as big as I'm comfortable making them. And if you like the smell of bee pollen, you're going to like the smell of this cooking. Personally, I like the flavor of pancakes and I don't add sugar to any of them. <laughs> but I grew up with buckwheat pancakes and I like them too. This has a drier texture if you do not add the butter or the oil um, that you wouldn't normally add to a pancake batter. But if you didn't do it then it's going to be a little drier but these are their flavor is unlike any other pancake you've eaten. If you don't like buckwheat, trust me these are better than buckwheat. I don't like white flour so this is right up our alley. These are delicious. We'll leave a recipe. Get your kids out shake some pollen into oh I wanted to add that the reason I don't shake the pollen in the bag like most people do and I take the bag and I pull all that off is because I get more pollen from less plants and less wading through the mud and the muck and dealing with bugs than I would imagine these guys are getting by just shaking pollen loose in a bag thus I get the chafe and every now and then a bug and that's why I use the screen to to get rid of it all but Look for the recipe at the end of the video. Hope to see you guys out there safe and happy foraging.